Hey there, welcome to Simply Real TV. It's another cold spring morning here in Colorado. And I've got this fire going out here in the shop. And today I'm going to put some more gear on my kayak. So my goals for today's video are to install the Naqua battery, and finish my install of the fish finder, then we'll put in the Dakota lithium, and we'll juice up that Mancota and see, make sure she works. So my plan is to install this tilt swivel quick release mount onto the ram mount accessory here, and then attach it onto that ball there. And then I'll run the power through with my transducer cable to the front hatch. I got this Yak Attack Naqua battery to run the fish finder on. So this is a lithium battery. Um, I believe it's a 10 amp hour and uh, it's a little 12 volt battery. I'll run that separate from my motor battery. We should have plenty of power for a full day of fishing. Got my cable here from Garmin to power the fish finder with. So we'll install that today. I picked up a Dakota lithium battery to put in our box here. That'll run our motor. All right, so I've got the uh, all the parts we need to set up this fish finder. Um, the Naqua battery kit came with a little power cable set up. So we'll get that wired on today. Then we're going to mount the quick release onto the ram mount, and then this will go on the T-Track on the kayak, and we should be able to adjust our fish finder display however we need it. So I bought all of this stuff myself. Uh, they didn't send me any of it. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. Uh, this is what I'm gonna use going forward on this next season of kayak fishing. It's one of the things that attracted me on these ram mounts is number one I thought these were plastic looking at it online but now that I have one in my hand it's nice cold metal since it's so cold in my garage right now um, but uh, I've used like rail blazer and I've used some of the oh it's the other one the Scotties the Scotties are pretty good the rail blazers are good, but I always end up breaking the little plastic locks. The Garmin will screw onto here. I'll go ahead and tighten that up. So there's my GPS mount. And when you tighten this little side bolt, man, it just kind of locks everything in place. I like that. So we're gonna pop the quick release into the stand like so it's adjustable just up and down and then you can lock it in place so that won't move what I like about these is you just pop your fish finder on you're good to go all your cabling will come through the back and this will lock in your your wiring and then this should go right in this track. Perfect. Um, this is my transducer cable, which I ran in a previous video. And I think I got it to where I can move this all the way to the end here. Tighten that down. Like so. Then I should be able to position this however I need. And then these are keyed. It's another thing I like about these uh, Garmin mounts is all the connections are keyed. So when you go to plug things on, it's all uh, 
everything should plug in nice and easy. You don't have to worry about breaking stuff. I think that'll be a pretty good spot for fishing from. Now the next thing I need to do is run a power wire, which may involve a little soldering, but that's where I'm going to connect the power to that Naqua battery. My plan is to have it Velcroed. I've seen that in some videos where guys Velcro those into the front and then you can pop it out easily, disconnect it and then charge it. So my father-in-law gave me this woodland stove to put in my garage here. It's been the handiest thing during the winter. Uh, he helped me pipe it all in. Uh, nice little woodland keep this thing stoked up. It's fairly quiet here in the garage. Don't have any fans running to heat it. It does all right. I've had it up to like 90 degrees in here before. Man, it's such good heat. A couple things I need to do on this kayak still. I'll buy a paddle for it. So I have one and then uh, I need to get it registered so I'll do a little video on how I registered it too. So I got my handy dandy Radio Shack wire cutters, collector's item. I got some heat shrink from the store. So I've got plenty of heat shrink for little projects like this. I'd rather do a solder joint than use these butt splices. I think if I did use these, I would end up siliconing the ends. So these two wires, I'm just gonna tie off to the side heat shrink those down. So I'll just cut myself a little bit of that. So. Straight edge on first. Okay, so we'll come down. Get these brown and blue wires taken care of. So now I'm going to join the reds and the blacks together. I may start with a, I'm going to offset the connection a little. Then I'm going to go ahead and tin these ends. Get this iron going. Solder on there. Black wire. Right. So now you gotta think about that heat shrink before you start getting too involved. Um, once I splice these together, I'm gonna want a piece that'll cover both wires and shrink down nicely. Size looks pretty good. Just gonna cut this in half. Yeah. And then, so here's my battery cable. Look at these. So I wanna match the offset. I think what I'll do first is I'll solder the red wires. So I'll go ahead and uh, strip and tin this one. This one's a little different wire gauge. Go ahead and uh, tin this wire too. That helps with soldering them together. One thing I don't have is some solder flux, but this is a garage shop, so we're just gonna have to make do. All right, so I got the heat shrink on, and I'm gonna solder these two wires together. Three 
two hands. <laughs> Little trick I do is I'll get some solder on the tip. Then I'll come over here and just get that on there. So there we got a nice joint. Shouldn't come apart. And then we'll heat shrink that down. Maybe. Heat shrink. Don't forget the heat shrink. Put that on there. Trim up our black leads. We'll tin up our black lead. Put these black wires together. I solder for a living, so I've got a lot of practice at trying to manage everything with two hands, but they do make tools that make soldering things like this easier to do. <laughs> I just never use them. So there we go, we've got the black wire soldered. I'm gonna heat shrink this down carefully without melting anything. There's our solder joint. Got our fuse. Put this cover back on here because I'll probably want to cover these power lead, these uh, leads when I'm not using the fish finder. So I got the battery. I'm gonna go ahead and just tie this power in temporarily. All right, and then I'll just simply plug this in. I like how they have the, the indicators on here. I can find them, there we go. That helps a lot with getting things lined up. Nice little sealed plug. I may come through and put some silicone over these heat shrink ends just to seal things up. But we should have some power now if everything's right. There we go. Success. Come up through the grommet. We just run this all the way to the fish finder. Clip that back on. Something like so. I don't know if this foam piece is gonna work with these cables or not, but I'm gonna give it a try. Seems like it's working. Fits good and tight now. Which is good, because I think that'll create a nice seal. That's what we want. So, I'll put this back on. So I'll follow up with some zip ties on these cables here. Kind of get these nice and organized. And then, um, now I'll work on mounting the battery up here. And uh, this part will be done. Now we can move on to the motor. I'm basically going to put the battery right there. And if you look close, you can see that's where the 
tran the back of the transducer mount is. And it's kind of molded for that transducer. There we go. I might Velcro it anyway, just so it stays put, and then I'll zip tie the cables up so they're nice and neat. Let's set that down in there. Wow. Stuff's very sticky. Cool. I suppose there could be some water that collects down underneath there. It's actually not sitting on the bottom, but I don't think that'll be too big of a deal if that did happen. And this compartment seals nice, so there shouldn't be any issues there. All right, so the next item I'm gonna install will be the Dakota Lithium 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. This is another item I just went out and bought. I've never tried these before. I've seen a lot of good reviews on YouTube about these especially for the application I'm going to use it for. Um, one cool thing I liked about the Dakota Lithium is it has an 11 year warranty and uh, that's the best one out there right now. I think this battery is about 13 or 14 pounds. You can lift it with one arm. Um, sitting in the back of this kayak, it'll be a pretty, pretty light thing to have to lug around. You can do the lead acid battery version and that's gonna like, the weight on one of those will really add to your kayak. Battery box came with the kayak, so all I have to do is mount this lithium battery inside the box or actually just place it inside the box and then hook up these cables. I'll go ahead and make these connections here. And then, let's see, there's a certain way this cover goes on. This upper part goes over the terminals. So, put it on like so. Shut. Tighten that down. It's kind of neat because if you pull this off of your boat, there's a little bungee here. You can attach your cord with. It's pretty slick. You can tell it's been sitting around a while. <laughs> it's all dusty. Battery fits there. Simply plugs in right here, like so. Then we got a strap that comes around at the front of the seat. Tilt the seat back. Strap that goes through the seat. And clips right here. So that'll hold, hold your seat on. It's pretty handy. And then this cover here, since we have the motor on, we don't need this. This will cover the hatch where the motor is. So that's a feature I like about this kayak because there's a lot of, some lakes in Colorado where you can't use a motor. So I just leave the motor in the car, put this in the hole, and then I can paddle my way around. So that was one of the attractions I had to this kayak. Uh, it's going to be multi-use. So we have now arrived at the moment I've been waiting for for quite some time, and that is to see how this whole apparatus works and if it works. Keeping my fingers crossed, it's 
Minn Kota should be fine, right? <laughs> this will control it. And we got, we got to put this kill switch in. Apparently you tie that to yourself. If you fall out of the boat, that'll turn the motor off. So it doesn't see the motor. Pull this cord here. This deploys it. I just heard a beep. So that means this is engaged. Um, should be able to see if there's battery. Yep, we got power. Now what does our so it has found the motor. Let me see if I can turn it. Cool. Okay, let's see what it does. I'll give it some juice. Give you the miles per hour. Of course, uh, and then on the upper left there is the speed setting. Two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. All the way to ten. So since we're not in the water and we're not moving, it won't give us the mile per hour. But we can test that out when we get to the lake. And I think it's telling me the time there in the top. That's pretty cool. I was wondering what time it was. And then this button will turn it off. And then there's all kinds of little features on here. There's the spot lock button, electronic anchor. Uh, we've got, you can have it point north I guess shows you the heading um, there's a lot of things I need to figure out on this still you can program a point where you start and it'll drive you back to the dock at the end of the day so that'll be handy for uh, reeling up poles or rounding up tackle and stuff getting all my lures back organized I won't have to focus on driving the boat so much um, yeah, I can't wait to try this out. So let's say we're cruising along. Fall out of the boat. Kill switch works. Plug it back on. Back engaged. I think we gotta turn this back on. Good to go. Cool. A Dakota lithium battery came with a charger and it's just real simple plug and play. The Yak Attack Naqua battery also came with a charger, which you can use to um, see how full the battery is when it's not plugged in. I thought that was pretty cool too. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Um, got all the electronics in today. That's pretty awesome. Didn't take too long. Stay tuned for the next video where I show you how I registered the kayak and how I put the numbers on. Appreciate you guys watching these videos, subscribing, hitting thumbs up. Uh, we'll keep the content rolling. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>